Welcome into Hitting Hard with John Chuckery here on Locked On Sports Atlanta. Today on the show, the numbers don't lie when it comes to the Braves. Also, how close are the Atlanta Hawks to Boston or Golden State? And man, I was going through how many starting spots are really locked up for the Falcons. It's not all that good. All that and more, it is Hitting Hard with John Chuckery on Locked On Sports Atlanta. This is Hitting Hard with John Chuckery, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta. And it starts now. Welcome into Hitting Hard with John Chuckery here on Locked On Sports Atlanta. It is a Tuesday morning. Hope everybody had a great holiday weekend. Hope you took a minute or two to remember our fallen soldiers that uh, we honor and celebrate on Memorial Day. We ask you to head over to YouTube.com, put Locked On Sports Atlanta into your browser, subscribe to the channel, give us a comment or two, tell us what you think about the show. And as always, you can follow me on my personal Twitter page at JMCH316. Gee, it seems like we say this a lot, doesn't it? Uh, Braves lost again last night, and the Mets won. Nine and a half games now. Uh, so here's the thing. I, I always love baseball fans, right? One of the things I love about baseball fans, because the baseball season is so long and so arduous and just seems like it never wants to end, right? I always laugh because baseball fans, it's very easy to always move the needle wherever you need it to, to fit your argument, right? It's never too late in baseball, right? So you get the people say, oh, I, you know, I wait a month, you know, into the season. All right, well, we're a couple of months into the season. Well, you know, I, I don't even look at the standings until Memorial Day. Okay, well, Memorial Day was yesterday. Well, you, you know, I wait until June before I start looking at, you know, everything in baseball. Okay, June is tomorrow. Well, you, you know, I, I wait till a third of the season is over with before I evaluate. Okay, for the Braves, that's Saturday night. When they're done Saturday night, they'll be a third of the way done through it. So all the narratives, a Memorial Day, the June 1st, and, and a third of all of those things just keep going, pop, 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 pop. Just keep chopping them like a piece of, you know, meat on a board, right? Braves sit nine and a half games back, and the numbers don't lie when it comes to the Atlanta Braves. Listen to some of these numbers, and you'll know exactly why the Braves are where they are. Austin Riley, 161 with runners in scoring position. Eight of his 12 homers have been solo home runs. Matt Olson, remember that acquisition? 180 with runners in scoring position. Four out of his five homers are solo home runs. Ozzy Albies, he's the valedictorian of this bunch. 238 with runners in scoring position. But six of his six home runs, every home run has been solo this year. Marcelo Zuna, 188 with runners in scoring position. Seven out of his 10 homers are solo home runs. So we came into this brave season with the notion of how good and more importantly, how deep this lineup was going to be. Ronnie at the top, and you put in Olsen wherever he's the new addition or plays Freddie, and our, uh, Marcelo Zuna's back, and Riley's coming off a silver slugger year, and we brought Duvall back, and we got Rosario, and we got this guy, and we got that guy, and Dansby's in his free agent year. You maybe expect a big year out of him. Ozzy, maybe the best offensive second baseman in baseball. Ba 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 ba. Right? All the way down and through top to bottom. But it hasn't delivered. And, and we'll talk about their defense in just a second. But if you want to know the story of the Braves, when you have four of your main guys that are 161, 180, 238, 188, and are hitting 75, 80, 100, 70% of their home runs with nobody on base, that's the story of the Braves' season, is their lack of clutch. And we go back to last year, and even... You know, really, if you start to look at the numbers from last year, when the Braves got hot, you know, didn't matter how big of a lead another team had, this, any other, the Braves were a clutch team all year long. And then when they made the trades and got Peterson and Rosario and Soler, they had so many clutch moments from those guys. So many moments that you look back and say, wow, that was a big moment here. That was a big moment there. This year, they can't get out of their own way. 
they again last night were just as unclutch as you could possibly be in that game against Arizona. I'm pulling up the numbers right now because I think they went over with runners in scoring position last night. And how many nights have we come on and, and talked about that? Uh, last night, the Braves were 0 for 10 with runners in scoring position. With all due respect, how are you going to win if you're 0 for 10 with runners in scoring position? How are you going to pull that off? And that's the story of the Braves. We can talk about their pitching and their bullpen and this, that, and the other. We can talk about all kinds of different things. But they have been awful when it comes to finding a way to drive in runs. And it doesn't matter how many lineup changes, how many different things Snitker has tried. You know, at some point, the guys that you built your team around, you know, you you gave Olsen the money. Riley's one of your young core. Ozzy's part of your long-term plan. Ozuna's here for the next several years. Again, we keep going back to those guys at some point have to start performing. Well, when is that? You know, that that's why I just kind of laugh when people tell me about, well, you know, I don't watch this and that I'll do this. And, you know, I wait till here. And the Braves will just flip their switch and all that. Well, when does that happen? Somebody start quantifying all of this stuff for me because you're nine and a half games back now in the division and you're not moving forward. You're you're continuing to go backward. And so all these little milestones that people say Memorial Day, June, third of the sea, all these little milestones, you're going to look up and you're going to be 10, 12, 13 games behind. And then it becomes a matter of, okay, well, the Braves catch fire. Cool. What are the Mets doing? Because all the Mets keep doing is winning, 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 winning. And I can tell you right now, if you think the wild card is going to be easy with St. Louis and the Padres and the Giants and all these other teams that are really good and off to a better start than you are, you know, you when you talk about the wild card, the wild card isn't a matter of how many games back. It's a matter of how many teams you have to jump. That's what we keep forgetting about the division is it's not just the Braves have to start winning. You have to get the Mets to start losing. Now, as I've said a thousand times on this program, my radio show, this place, that place, today's the last day of the month in May. I told you June 2nd is the date to watch for the Mets. Let's see what the Mets do starting on June 1st for that next couple of weeks when they're in L.A. to take on the Dodgers. They're in San Diego to take on the Padres. They got to go play the, I call them the California Angels. I don't really care what they are. They were they were the California Angels when I grew up. That's what I'm always going to call them. California Angels. With Otani, you know, maybe the two best players in all of baseball. With Otani and Trout and all those guys. Then you come home if you're the Mets, when you're the Mets. And then you got to play three games with Milwaukee. So you've got a stretch of, what, 13 games where you're going to play, face really some of all of the top teams in you know, Major League Baseball. You're going to face some of the best teams in Major League Baseball. If you're a Braves fan, you better hope the Mets go on some kind of extended losing streak. But I'll be honest with you, they haven't shown that they're about to lose a whole bunch of games. And, and it's crazy to think that no Scherzer, no DeGrom, that the Mets are hanging tough, but they are. So... You're getting to where that it's great to say that, oh, the Braves will catch fire and all this. And you zero signs. We're into, we're about to be at June 1st. And this team hasn't had a three game winning streak the entire year. But you're going to tell me that they're going to make up nine and a half games in the blink of an eye. I hope, and, and I hope that the Braves figure out how to get this thing back on track. But these numbers don't lie about where the Braves are. They've been unclutch. The Mets have found a way to win games. And you're going to have to tell me how those two things are going to switch one another. All right, when we get back, how close are the Atlanta Hawks to either of these teams that are in the NBA Finals? We'll talk about that next. It's Hitting Hard with John Chuckery on Locked On Sports Atlanta. <laughs> 